I think truly one of the most disgusting parts of the Liberal Party's agenda has been their wild expansion of the MAID program. I think the MAID program from the start was always going to lead to horrible outcomes. I think even the outcomes it set out to achieve at the very beginning were not exactly things that we should have been embracing. But despite the fact that I think most Canadians have been disturbed by how the May program, Medical Assistance in Dying, has been offered to people like veterans, people with very minor disabilities, and others that the state just doesn't want to take care of and would rather just unburden the healthcare system of in the darkest way possible, they still are not just defending this program, but calling it very successful. Here is a Liberal MP, Nate Erickson Smith, who is conveniently not running in the next election because he knows the Liberals are going to lose. He said, the sky hasn't fallen, the slope isn't slippery. And let me just quickly say, yes, the slope is slippery. The Liberals are trying to pass legislation to, they keep walking it back a little bit because they're nervous about putting this forward because they know a lot of Canadians don't, won't go along with it. But they keep proposing expansions to MAID that would allow people with mental illnesses like depression to be able to access the program completely nutty and that is the definition of a slippery slope that we are on and he was getting back to it he says medical assistance in dying has been an overwhelming success in canada it has enhanced freedom reduced suffering and provided a dignified death to thousands of people in need read more here and i'm going to get to someone who responds to both him and the article itself who will detail out some of the issues but imagine how callous that line is it has enhanced freedom yes being able to kill yourself is a true enhancement to freedom, especially when the state just doesn't want to care for you. So they offer you medical assistance and dying so that they can just free up their weekends. Just truly disgusting. This is not an enhancement to freedom. It's an anti-life policy that sees Canadians with uh, like, like any sort of disabilities or long-term medical issues as being somehow burdensome and that they should consider ending their suffering and just giving into the MAID program. I know that there are some people out there who truly are suffering with a terminal illness. They're not going to live more than a week or something like that, and maybe MAID makes sense for them. But even in those cases, it's still a tragic decision, yet the liberals talk about it like it's a, a fantastic storybook ending uh, to someone's life when it really isn't. It's a, a very clinical, bureaucratic way of sort of not treating life with dignity, at least in my opinion. I 100% I would want to get rid of this program. I want to get to someone who had the perfect response to this, but right before I do that, I, Wyatt Claypool, just want to quickly plug that I am running for the Calgary Signal Hill Conservative Party nomination. If you live in these riding boundaries, they're changing in April. That's why Bowness and Greenbrier are no longer part of it. If you live in this general area of Calgary, check to see if you live in the riding. If you do, go and buy a Conservative Party membership. My website is in the description of this video below, wyattclaypool.com. Click on that, and there's a lot of get a membership buttons that lead you to the Conservatives website. Anyways, I want to talk, I want to bring up this response from Alyssa Globo, who is one of the co-runners and founders of the Right Now Pro-Life organization. I thought this was the perfect response to Nate. Couldn't have said it better myself, so I just wanted to highlight what she said here. Also, I do have a link to the Right Now uh, website sign-up list if you want to be able to get on their list. They're pushing back not only against the radical abortion non-laws that we have in this country, but also the expansion of made. They're trying to make sure that we roll it back and prevent things like mental illness from being something that allows people to end their lives. Anyway, so there's Alyssa Globo's response. She said, Erickson Smith believes that if we look at the numbers, we won't care as much because the majority are elderly and are going to die anyways. It's more callous than convincing. Oh, and only a dozen or so young people have died from assisted suicide whose deaths wasn't reasonably foreseeable. No biggie. Christine Gauthier, a, f a veteran and former Paralympian, had been fighting for a home wheelchair ramp for five years. Instead, the Veterans Affairs Office offered her assisted suicide and said they would provide the equipment. Uh, Alan Nichols, who had a, vic a history of depression, was euthanized after listing only one health condition for his request to, di uh, for, to die, hearing loss. Roger Follier, who had a degenerative brain disorder and was hospitalized in London, Ontario, was so alarmed by hospital staff regularly mentioning assisted suicide that he began to secretly record their conversations. In one recording, the hospital director of ethics told Follier that for him to remain in hospital, it would cost $1,500 a day. 
Candace Lewis, a 25-year-old woman with cerebral palsy and a spinal bifida, was taken to the hospital, and during her stay, a doctor told her mother that if she did not pursue assisted suicide, it would be selfish. And the list goes on. Canada is the only country that allows nurse practitioners, not just doctors, to end patients' lives. Physicians and nurses are told to inform patients if they might qualify to be killed as one of their clinical care options. Can Canadian patients are not required to have exhaustive all treatment alternatives before seeking assisted suicide. So yes, Nathan, the sky is falling. Your government has recklessly created one of the most permissive euthanasia regimes in the world that preys, guilts, and coerces extremely vulnerable people. The fact that your government keeps delaying any further expansion shows you know that the Canadian uh, that Canadians do not stand with you, and if you continue to expand before the next election, you will worse, uh, you will lose worse than you've already projected to lose. I think that is an, a great response to this by Alyssa Global. I will also link her tweet in the description of the video below. Go give your retweet and a like. Sign up with the right now's email list. I think it's good to have people aware of who the nomination candidates are in their writings for the conservatives who are anti-made, even maybe if there's an anti-made liberal in some areas, if it's a super liberal writing, you can vote for them. But we really need to, I think this needs to be an issue brought to the forefront. The carbon tax is bad, 100%. If I was in parliament, first thing I'd do is eliminate it. A lot of other policies are bad. The Liberal Party's corruption is bad. But I think what's worse than anything else is the Liberals' deliberate reducing of the value of human life. The idea that human life is worth nothing more than dollars and that if it takes a burden off the healthcare industry, well, it's worth a hospital director insulting a mother by saying that their daughter or son should maybe not be allowed to live because it's selfish and it costs them a lot of money and maybe they don't get to go on as many vacations if there are people who are sick and need assistance or people who have disabilities need assistance. It's absolutely hor horrific. This is where I, I, I have no patience for one level liberal say, well, conservatives aren't compassionate like us. We're the party of compassion. We stand up for the dignity of life because we let people encamp on the streets and die to, you know, massive like <laughs> drug overdoses because we just give them free drugs. No, the liberals and the NDP and the other lefties are not compassionate at all. Just look at the fact that they are okay with a mass euthanasia, euthanasia program that is now taking over 4% of Canadians' lives every single year. Every single year, 4% of the those who die, die because of MAID. Very, very many of them did not need it, and it was not because they were in severe suffering. It's because they were basically pressured into doing it or because they had a mitigating mental health issues. Well, anyways, that's it for me today. If you guys want to donate to the Give, Send, Go campaign that I and the National Telegraph are running, that'd be very nice. We're $25,000 deep into fighting back against a ridiculous billionaire's defamation suit against us. He has no evidence we've said anything wrong. All the evidence points to our reporting being absolutely right. And we weren't even the first to report the, uh, the issues with him. But, you know, he thinks he, he can bully us into apologizing to him so he can pretend every bad thing ever said about him is just false and defamatory. Anyways, also, again, I'm running for the uh, Calgary Signal Hill Conservative Party nomination, Wyatt Claypool. If you buy a membership and you live in that area, vote for me number one on your ballot. The nomination date will probably be set sometime after April when these riding, new riding boundaries come into effect. Uh, you know, Alberta is getting three new ridings, which is great. Uh, but that also means we have this complexity of having to redistribute the geography so that uh, there is enough room for the three extra areas. They can't exactly be put in fantasy land, so all the ridings have to change. Anyways, that should be it for me today, and I'll be back with another video later on.